So, what is the network prediction interface? According to the Unreal documentation, it's an interface for objects that want to perform network prediction of movement. Well, I think this description falls short of what the network prediction interface really is. It's a lot more complicated, but the results are much more awesome. Let's take a look in detail, shall we? To understand the system, first we need to understand the problem it is trying to solve. The future is now! Soon every American home will integrate their television, phone and computer. You'll be able to visit the Louvre on one channel or watch female mud wrestling on another. You can do your shopping at home or play Mortal Kombat with a friend in Vietnam. There's no end to the possibility. Have you ever wondered how do games handle the communication of parameters between players that are hundreds and even thousands of kilometers away? The universe we live in has a velocity limit, the speed of light, or the speed of causality. Search for that term in the YouTube for some fun background. So, whatever interaction we have with each other is already capped at almost 300 million meters time per second. That's crazy fast when we interact with each other in person. But what about when we interact with each other over vast distances? You may have already noticed this when you make a call over the telephone grid. A very tiny, almost unnoticeable lag between the time it takes in between what you say reaches the person you are talking to. I know for a fact that most people work around this lag because most people speak in pauses when talking over the phone, to wait for the other to respond before cluttering the channel. Speaking of the telecommunications networks, the speed of light is not the only impediment to immediate communication. You also have to take into account the time it takes to, for the information to be converted to an electrical signal, this signal to be routed from the original device to the network, the channel of said signal over the network to the destination and finally the conversion from the electrical signal back to the audio that can be easily understood by a human being. It took humanity over a century, from the first telephone line ever in Boston back in 1877, to the modern telecommunication networks that make up the internet to finally reach the whole globe. We are connected with each other now more than ever, and behind the scenes there's more to it than the marvels of engineering that make up the hardware of these systems. There's also the software and the combined efforts of geniuses in math, physics, algorithms and much more, handling, handling millions of operations per minute across six continents, 24 hours per day, seven days a week. You can finally play real-time Mortal Kombat with a friend in Vietnam, and still the velocity limit will be almost 300 million meters per second. No matter how fast we can make telecommunication signals go, they also have a speed limit. This is the reason of lag, the result of the speed of causality in addition to the time it takes for the systems to channel the information across the network. Now, speaking of games, the network prediction interface tries to solve the problem of lag and modern games manage to make it seem like every player in the match it's for all intents and purposes in the same physical location. Behind the scenes, this system accurately depicts a level in which players can interact with each other and it appears as if they were in real time, when in fact they can be separated in time up to 250 milliseconds. Now, 250 milliseconds might not sound like a lot, but considering the average human response time can vary from 190 milliseconds to 260, that's actually twice as much time for your own character to react to your own reaction. You will notice something like that. In fact, as early as the 2000s, 
It was discovered that players will start to notice the lag for times above 50 milliseconds. So, developers cannot change the speed at which information is sent and received over the networks, but they can work around this issue with some clever tricks. All in all, still following a very important video game server guideline, which is the server must be authoritative. This means that the version of values in this and the state in the server is the real one. Think of it like a dungeon master or the referee in a game. This is meant to guarantee the integrity of information between the game and all players and also to make it more difficult for cheaters to force themselves remotely. The problem, in a game that is 100% authoritative, the players on remote machines would experience a lag in between the time it takes the information from their input to reach the server, the server to perform the instructions and then send back the resulting states to the clients. In this scenario, the user experience of clients would be abysmal. Imagine pressing the move forward command on your keyboard or controller only for your character to move after a significant amount of time later. It's like controlling a, a robot on Mars. Imagine waiting up to 40 minutes between updates because of the distance. Okay, maybe not that much, but you get the idea. And just when you thought things could not get any worse, just realize that this lag takes place when you need to put into practice your superhuman reflexes. Now. Even if your brain sends the response to your hands in fractions of a second, the game will delay because of the latency. Frustrating. Players would ditch your game before a single match has ended, or worse, their reflexes would atrophy to adapt to these silly conditions. Now you may ask, why don't we perform the movement process locally and send the information to the server? This way, the clients can enjoy an immediate and seamless experience and the network process can be handled behind the scenes. In a perfect world, you would be right, but sadly, if we were to implement a system like this, the server would not be authoritative, and not only would the server have to perform additional calculations to handle the variables and smooth out all parameters to properly define the valid state, the clients would be free to hack the game and imprint whatever value they want of, as if it were real or valid. Do you want infinite ammo? Just don't tell the server that you ran out of ammo. Do you want faster speed? Just send the server information in which you are changing locations farther and farther away. If you would like to see what this looks like, just play GTA 5 online. You are bound to find the hacker sooner rather than later. They implemented a system like this precisely because a game that relies heavily on physics, which is an additional challenge to replicate, and because of the sheer volume of players, they can afford to ban some cheaters, whilst also nobody can argue with them since cheaters can negatively impact their monetization scheme. So, how do games handle these issues? Enter the network prediction interface, comprised of four main parts replication, correction, prediction, and in addition to this, it makes use of a replay system that works behind the scenes. For the client side prediction, clients perform a local simulation. Just like our example in the client authority version, they get immediate feedback and then and their user experience becomes as good as it gets. But now they send nicely compressed packets of instructions. Instead of only getting the resulting values, the server performs once again the same instructions that the client performed, in the same intervals of time. Think of it as the physics problems in school. What is the final position of character D at time T after moving at velocity B for some amount of seconds s. This way, cheating is also made more difficult, because the server performs only valid operations against sensitive results. So, 
even if the players would send hacked information, the server can just clamp the values to the valid ranges, or straight out kick them out of the session if their communication shows some blatant signs of tampering. At this stage, the server, having correct state of the game, sends the current values to all players. And if a significant difference occurs between the server's authoritative version and each client's values arises, the server then sends a correction instructions to the client for it to be in check. As I said earlier, when the client receives the correction, more time has passed locally. He or she have been performing more actions in between. If the system were to just imprint the server's corrections, remote players would be instantly teleported back to their places back in time, corresponding to the server's last revised state, making the effect of lag apparent once again. Instead, the geniuses at Epic devised a clever solution to this issue as well. Replay. When the client receives the correction, it does return back in time to the correct value. However, the client redoes or replace all the instructions from that point on to the current local time in a single tick, effectively predicting where it should be now after the correction was implemented, as if the correction were implemented in the past. Now then, I'm not gonna lie, clients can still notice these sudden jumps, jittering, etc. But finally, the clients can enjoy a seamless user experience and the game still achieves integrity with a 100% server authority model. Epic has made this system readily available to any Unreal Engine project. Every licensee has been using this system right off the bat anytime they have been using the default Unreal character, represented throughout the webs as the famous in Unreal Mannequin. The network prediction interface is integrated into the character movement component. But that's not the end of the story because you can integrate this interface into your own classes to implement all the functionalities that I have described and improve your player user experience. Remember that, in any game that handles more than two players, most of your players are going to be experiencing the client's version of your game. So, stay tuned because in the following videos I'm going to show you how to implement the network prediction interface into your projects. Quick disclaimer, this is not a tutorial in which you are going to follow along and just copy and paste what I do. Also, I made available the classes as samples, this is rather a class, to show you how is that you would go about researching the interface in your real code to implement it yourself. At the end of the day, you are the only one with the knowledge needed to properly define the best variables and functions to replicate depending on your game's needs. Or you could always contact me if you would like the help of my consultation services to help you integrate this and other systems into your Unreal Engine projects. Let's bring out awesome ideas to life together. So if you are ready. Like, comment and subscribe and let's move on!